So, um, but yeah, nah. We hopefully you are good, man. I know I see Leo in the chat. Leo was popping, man. Hopefully, I think you're. I would think you're working, or maybe you're relaxing by now. Hopefully, you are relaxing. Oh, sorry. I hope hope all is well. I know Tuesdays are, you know, hit or miss in some cases, but. Uh, damn, what are we making, bro? Talk about it. Talk about it. What what kind of TikTok are we making, man? What kind of, I I personally am very outdated. Um. It's stupid hot, man. Stupid. I went out there with sweats, you know. I like to wear sweats. I like to be actually... Be bringing, like, I like to be cold. Like, my house is pretty decently cold. But uh, for the most part, I like to be in sweats. I like to be in a sweater. Like, socks. You know, I don't know. I like to be toasty. I guess that's the... I think that's the, the verbiage for that. But, um, you know, today, you know... Today is one of those like fuck no, you know. I'm staying inside. But yeah, I'm I'm back to like the TikTok. I, I honestly don't uh I don't do TikToks, you know. My my wife loves TikTok and all that shit. Oh, I you know what? I I know what you mean, you know, but uh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I I'm honestly like my social media game like it's pretty weak um but it is what it is <laughs> I mean you gotta I know you gotta do certain things to get so to certain places but uh, you know sometimes shit like this is just like it's fun to me you know like I maybe not I like to have people in like the streams and all that but I digress on that end um, my boy Dave that was here yesterday, he's posting a TikTok because you know what? Everything I just said means nothing. I told him, I was like, you know what? Put that out there. Maybe we'll get people. Maybe, you know, put a little link, you know, maybe get them on the Twitch stream for today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, you know, who the fuck knows, right? But, but yeah, I know, um, just to, I know Leo on one of the fear gaming chats or the fear, fear gaming chat, um, he mentioned the E3, you know, presentation. Oh, how people missed it greatly. I mean, honestly, I would be one of them. Though the last few years, I've been I have missed them just because um, my work. You know, the way it lands, it just it just I don't know. Maybe I'm just busy. I I, I wouldn't I don't remember exactly why, but uh, I think the last one I watched was like actually sat down and watched. I would say. Yeah, I, yeah, it's tough, man. But yeah, I mean, we, we got to do what we got to do. I think the last one was 2016, 2017, I want to say. Around that time, man. I could really only remember Halo 4. And that should be even earlier, but I know I've seen some sat down. But um, I know... We're in the way of the world of the next gen consoles, the consoles that are living up similarly, similarly to like how the PS4 and the Xbox one were certain little, I guess, how should we say, I guess you, I don't even think it's deficiencies in the system. It's more like, I don't know, man, we're Microsoft community. Obviously I got like OG Xbox, Xbox 360, and I still have Xbox one games. Um, I'm pretty much a stan, I guess you could say. Man, I sold my Xbox One because it was garbage. And I explained to people the lack of new new titles that they, they couldn't grasp you in. You know, they were really going with Xbox Game Pass, which 10 out of 10, right? 10 out of 10. But how are you going to win new gamers? And right now, I'm going to set up the Bethesda. I, it should be the Xbox presentation we're going to watch. We're going to check out that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. We're going to have a little bit of geek moments. You know, I like to have all these stuff, you know, talk about all this shit, man. Um, you know, I mean, personally, I think in in the longer run, I got Game Pass. Dude, it's good, man. I had I had actually I had on the Xbox One. I had Game Pass, EA Access, and I'm missing something else, maybe. But I know for sure I had them both. Bro, it was great. But... Like, I wanted to play something new. 
I like, and that's a cliche. I mean, it's stupid, right? Because my whole, the whole premise of my streams and my Twitch channel is literally playing older titles. But with that being said, I sold it like 2016, 2017. So that's before like Fortnite maybe had come out around that time. So I think 2017 was the time I sold it. Maybe even 2018. I'm bugging. Yeah. And we'll we'll get into all of that during like as we watch the video. Like one thing before I'll, I'll just give you like one little talk that I had with my coworker because he's big on certain things like that as well. Is the whole aspect of Google Stadia, how it it obviously dropped and it's done in the sense of you know modern game gamers like it, it had such a big push didn't live up to it and now here we are but they're trailblazing in what they're they're going for you know cloud gaming is a thing cloud gaming is what a lot of people want with the idea of you know the shortages with chips you know so you can't i mean look we could barely get a fridge you're trying to get a fucking gpu you're out of your mind you know so i mean cloud gaming will save you tons of money in that sense or will it i mean it's kind of you know how you want to see it you know a gpu is kind of an investment that could save you four or five years close to even a decade in certain aspects but i mean cloud gaming is much more i guess you would say it's much more easier with the tvs getting smarter with certain stuff getting cheaper to make i mean who knows right so i say all that to say i mean game pass really could take advantage or i should say microsoft in, in general take their platform or even their title of microsoft and implant that into fucking um the cloud gaming and it would be stupid <laughs> i wonder maybe maybe it's a spin-off who knows it sounds very uh very close to let me uh let me set up over here let's see we got it yeah we do let me let me pause this. This music is whack. Okay, hope Leo, you let me know if you can hear it, okay? No, I have it. Okay. I need to check it out though. Hopefully this is Xbox and all that. Um it doesn't sound too loud, right? I don't think you want it too loud. That looks interesting. Hopefully the visuals as well look fine. Ooh. There it is, man. There it is. Sea of Thieves, I would think, right? If, uh, it, from what you showed me or what you put on the chat, Sea of Thieves, man. The Yakuza titles, man. Let me pause that shit real quick. Let's see right here. Dude, the fact that the Yakuza engine is in the new virtual, well, the remake, um, virtual fighter oh man virtual fighter looks so good man it makes me want to virtual fighter 5 final showdown i think that's what it's called dude it looks so good bro yeah my friend too and yakuza is such a good title i mean the the storytelling and certain aspects that they have certain games have emulated or tried to replicate but couldn't emulate properly oh man i mean i'm excited for that i mean Again, I don't have an Xbox, but the idea of that coming into play, but it goes into even what I just said, like the Yakuza titles, you know, like that's cool. That's Game Pass though. You know, I need some new shit and now see if these looks legit, like uh, how I mentioned, how how empty the world was and then how now that they're adding to it. Oh man, it's going to get bigger. And the, the I know, I know they said like some stuff gets repetitive, but that doesn't, they said the repetition doesn't stop it from being fun. So I was like, that's kind of cool to know. I mean, I guess 
keep that in 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 pocket right for that uh damn the back for back yeah is it back for blood is that what you said it's called yeah it looks good man it looks cool it looks very uh i don't know how to explain it uh it's it's not a, obviously a realistic approach to it um but it's like it looks almost arcadey in some ways but with a realistic taste to it. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. Maybe like it looks sort of like Mass Effect. I don't know. Like as far as modern arcade, I guess you could say. Yeah. Like Mass Effect to me has a realistic approach, but you still look at it and it's not obviously it's not going for like an uncharted look. You know, Nathan Drake, you look at his skin, like skin looks, you know, all that stuff. But it looks solid. Yeah. Mass Effect is, is one of those, man. Obviously, you don't play Andromeda. And don't obviously play the ending of Mass Effect 3. But I heard 1 and 2 are considered god tier as far as uh, RPG games are. But uh, let's keep going. A minute and a half in and a lot of promise. I forget. Yeah. They become the, the holders. Yes, yes, yeah. I had um, Oblivion. I didn't Skyrim. I played okay. I forget that Battlefield is a uh, exclusive, not exclusive, but official partner with uh, Microsoft. So you get it like two weeks earlier. You get the DLC stuff. DLC still? Okay. Ooh. I heard. I heard. Seventy six has gotten so much better since launch, and even after the first year. But when are, when are they bring, bringing back Club Penguin? Oh, they're finally remaking it? Party Animals? Because I know there was like some sort of game similar to that. Yeah. Hades, interesting. Interesting. That Diablo 2 looks legit. That looks awesome. And I don't even like the, the top downs. Uh, but it looks awesome. Okay. Far Cry 6 coming through. Coming through. <laughs> what the hell? SSX? Is this SSX? Are we getting SSX? Okay. Let's see how that works. Oh, this looks good. It reminds me of, um, man, what's it called? Uh, I have the game too. I need to, I'll show you right now. Ooh, interesting. A force, yeah. That one looks good. I, I had seen previews for that one. Age of Empire. <laughs> Still going strong. Is this the DLC? Oh, interesting. Wow. Outer Worlds, man. What? This one is the the tester to see if your computer is strong. Flight Simulator. <laughs> That's cool. What do we got, man? What are we looking at? Is this Horizon? Yeah. Okay.
Okay. That one looked pretty good, man. It looks good. I agree. I was pretty hooked on it. I ain't gonna lie. That looks solid, man. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's. Oh, the the fucking fridge, man. Fuck out of here. <laughs> um, I guess chat. Put your thoughts of the videos we. I mean, the trailers, mini trailers, whatever you want to call those. What we just saw. You know, I think I think what I can take from this, it's like um, it's like music. You know, like twenty twenty was lacking your heavy hitters and artists. You had a lot of um, good up and comers and musicians make a lot of plays. Twenty twenty one, as everything is opening up, you're getting albums from your favorite artists. And now that's what we're seeing with this year. Like, this is more or less what I wanted to see. Yeah, I, no, I agree. But think about it. Like, they, like, Xbox and Bethesda are really putting their fucking foot on everyone's neck right now. This is, like, this is literally what's going to happen, right? These little games, I'm more than sure, right? More of these, most, more or less, all these little titles are quote-unquote little titles not your halo infinites are gonna carry xbox to what i think could be a victory unless you know i still haven't seen the sony which we gotta check too which we will I, have they done their presentation i need to look into it um man like that was good that last one this vampire looking one it looked awesome oh yeah i was having this conversation with I think it was with Rob, like the Xbox 360, when it came out in 05, it had obviously a one year start, a head start against PS, PS3 and all that shit. And what it did was just carry the sales. And it was also carrying certain types of titles that you weren't, I guess, accustomed to seeing. And obviously the 360 became big for indie titles. A lot of games that were just never heard of. And you played them, and then you got, you know, I mean, Super Meat Boy, you know, you got certain games like that. I'll give, I mean, Impossible Game, I guess, you, I think came out there, but little games like that. I mean, I'm minor games, you know, as far as people really understand, but. And then the Xbox One came out. The first stages were legit entertainment, which made me hate the console. And then Phil Spencer jumps in and starts giving you nothing but games. Now, I mean, you're seeing you're seeing the Xbox Series X really go for that type of fucking feel, man. These games are gonna be good with all the studios they have. I mean, they honestly they should be cutting through PS5's throat and letting them know, hey, we're alpha, you beta, all that stuff. But we need to see how these games play out. Like Infinite, when it came out, obviously their little, I guess you call it even an alpha gameplay, it was pretty tough. Yeah, God God of War Five is gonna be an interesting title. It could be a hit or miss, man. It's hit or miss, though, because the game's technically over in some ways. Um, I know you still got the... So the I mean, I, I have not played God of War 4, but I know I have seen certain stuff where it's like, why continue with it? It's kind of like with the Uncharted series and all that stuff. Now, you can tell me on the, in the chat if I, you know, maybe I'm missing something. But I, I obviously, the people that create God of War and even... Uh, and uncharted certain uh ps like the playstation exclusives they tend to be fucking amazing regardless e even like last of us yes yeah yeah of course no and the game was fucking stunning bro have you seen it um so they ha i think they i know that the ps4 was i think only running at 30 fps and then if you i forget how exactly they do it dude when they run it at 60 FPS, it looks smooth. It looks legit. Other than, obviously, you play on the PS5. Yes, yeah, so you get all that. But I think even on the PS5, I might have to check that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What we got? 
Yeah, I think I think everyone's gonna give them ten out of tens. Xbox did really good on that. Let's see, Sony. I don't know if they have man. Ooh, Square Enix. And we have Ubisoft. We got a lot of videos to watch, guys. We got a lot of videos. Square Enix is interesting. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Matt Mercer here, and I'm back as your host of Square That's Enix. interesting, man. An ever ending a, a never ending uh series, don't you think? <laughs> let's see, let's see. Okay. Uh, so they didn't get the likeness from Chris Pratt. It looks good. It looks good. Oh yeah, man, this looks good, bro. <laughs> I don't like Final Fantasy like that. Like, I'll be the first to say, but. That looks solid. Like all these games, that's cool. I, I was thinking the same thing, um, but who knows, man? I mean, I guess we just got to be open. <laughs> we got to keep a fucking open mind with these movies slash comic type titles uh, for video games. <sighs> Let's see. Wow. Yeah, the game... <laughs> The game was suspect for a lot of people. That's gonna be interesting. What the hell? Oh, it's loading? Okay. Opera. Oh my god, this is a remake, isn't it? Near reincarnation. Yo, this, this fucking soundtrack, like the back sound is fucking sounding pretty fire. Makes me want to go fucking rave. Looks cool. Finally, it took him a while. At first, it reminded me of like the the game Heavy Rain, but I was like, nah, I don't think Square Enix made that one. I think it was a Sony published game, but I don't know who who was the studio for for that one. All right, man. Hey, Leo, you have a good one, bro. You drive safe. I mean, it looks sort of like Devil May Cry, but I don't think it is. Stranger of Paradise. Interesting. How interesting. Okay. Pop. And let's check it out. Nintendo. Xbox right now looks pretty good. I ain't gonna lie. Not because I'm a fucking stan, but shit looks good.
This is Watch Dogs? Okay. That looks like um, Avatar and shit. Okay, stop. Stop acting wild. You want to chill out, champ? Yeah, chill, chill. Well, I don't know how. It was literally just loaded, and now it's acting like a fucking pain in the ass. How even, bro? How even? All right. Okay, there you go. Damn, gotta go get one. Gotta go get one. Oh, I saw the trailer for this one. Yeah. It's okay. What the fuck? I wonder how much money Just Dance makes. Even for their mobile title, that was pretty solid. Damn, they get a DLC. Interesting, man. You're playing as the bad guys. Wow. Or the antagonist. Let's not, let's not sound so crazy. Versus Raven Rabbit sparks a hope. My boy Mario thinking it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Yo, they can't be Peach, right? All right. This might be good. Raven Rabbit's games are actually pretty solid. That's an interesting title. I think that title is actually gonna be pretty good. Avatar, I knew it, man. It reminds me of uh, Horizon, was it Horizon Zero Dawn? Was it something like that?
quite a gorgeous game. A lot of good, a lot of beautiful colors all around. The elements are nice. IGN Summer of Gaming is powered by Duracell Optimum. All summer long, we're bringing you the game announcements, developer interviews, and all, all the demos you care about. So get comfortable and get ready to play. Bum. Come on, bro. Upgrade your <sighs> and then let's jump onto solo cam. Oh no, let's do let's pause this shit. Let's go back. We don't need to hear all that. Uh What did we learn from seeing certain stuff like Square Enix or even Ubisoft, right? Square Enix is going to control. It seems like they're going to control the uh, Mediterranean to even like. I don't know how you cut. Like you got your Asian markets and all that. Like I know there's they're going to control that and they're going to get big bucks from that for sure. Square Enix is going to make bank. Uh, if we're talking. Ubisoft in, in the landscape of power players as far as big games are concerned This is the year man. This is the year they're gonna they're either gonna Flourish or I guess flounder, you know, I think they can make a comeback kind of like how Capcom did With with siege at its peak right now. That's playable till fucking through 30 years from now you got certain games that are gonna carry, but you're gonna have to make that variety. I know I'm saying everything like everyone knows that. Um, but the games they got right now, like that Ra that Ra that rabbit versus fucking and Mario game, that game's gonna make big bucks, and it looks like it's a good game. Um, the Avatar game, obviously, we're talking to chat right now about certain movie title games, you know, um. Or certain games that have that movie background or even a comic or even a book background they're questionable sometimes um, depending on publishers and studios that work on it I should say more studios not the publishers but I mean that game looked good man avatar looks solid I think um, as far as uh, Ubisoft's concerned I think they're looking good and I think I'm gonna go predict it. I'm I'm winging it and say I think they they'll have a great year this year for sure. I think their their lineup is looking to be solid. What well, I, I know some some of those games for 2022, but I think they got it, man. I think they're in the bag for that one. Let's see. It's now under a huge amount of pressure. That's a fact, man. <laughs> That's funny. Let's watch Scott the Waz. y'all scott here please for the love of god don't mind me i'm just doing some touch-ups to my high school yearbook photo you think they let me do retakes nine years later there's got to be a grace period i've been having trouble going to so sleep ass. i don't know what people thought of me back then so hopefully this will change their minds okay and we're done i actually toned it down i didn't want to get too laid telling the truth What are you, a bitch? Why well, be honest about how your video game looks when you can just lie and deal with it when it's already bought? False advertising is how many companies roll. We've all seen those fast food comparison shots. This is what's advertised, and this is what I got. What the hell? Most of the time for marketing, they'll use something that represents the final product, but you do some color correction, adjust the lighting, tweak a few angles <laughs> here and there, boom, good enough for air. And when it comes to video games, they are no stranger to catfishing. Why show actual gameplay in your ad when you can show something that's neither a game nor being played? It's way easier to disappoint players into 
when tice them with the truth no matter what false advertising is always gonna stick with gaming it's been there since the very start and it'll be there till the very end in four months advertisers know they could just show you what the actual game is gonna be like or they could visualize what it will feel like garbage sometimes advertisements <laughs> don't necessarily lie but with the way they're set up you come in with certain expectations with the mario galaxy commercials and box art i thought you could fly through space just like this to each of the galaxies instead they just play a cutscene of mario flying and when you would fly in game it would mostly just be an automated thing going from one place to another you did get a power up Put it in sound twenty. Played in the game, the Red Star, and that let you freely fly for a decent amount of time. But it was only in one level and the hub world. I wanted to cream through space to all these levels, like how this looked. <laughs> and Super Mario Galaxy just ended up being my favorite game of all time. Uh, I'll take the single tier. This is kind of the mentality of a lot of old school box art. Box art in general is supposed to be an artistic representation of oh, the game. I fucking mind. hate of course, that. Shouldn't lie, but if you're waiting for an exact moment in the game to look <laughs> just like the box art. <laughs> Oh, that's a toughie. I don't think this ever happened in Title Legends. Obviously, these take and hyperbolize the best and most defining moments of the game to make for a great and appealing piece of art that also isn't misleading, which is a difficult thing to balance. Atari thought we were idiots. Oh, yeah, this isn't misleading because under the right mindset, the game will make you feel like this. So leading so... <laughs> you thought we were past this level of deception? Oh, no, no, no. See, many have noticed how box art has become more in line with what we expect out of our games these days, but the angst behind the Atari box art lives on in the form of trailers we could show the product oh and get people i hated excited, or that bro we could not show the product and get people excited and pissed eventually hey sometimes you just have to show something and if that something isn't enough america's yo i remember back in the day right when you'd buy games as a kid you would always you would go in uh knowing more than you should about certain games because you didn't want to make that mistake you know at least especially for me i was a brokey so I remember I saw Brink and I was like, yo, this game kind of looks tight. I started looking at uh, actual gameplay. I was like, yo, this game is garbage. Excuse me. Dude, the fact that, like, the trailer didn't know, like, justice is fucking. I mean, they lied, you know, I should say that. It's kind of like Watch Dogs, you know. Ah, man. But Scott the Waz, what a, what a clever guy that guy is. The biggest fear becomes a reality. The gamers will revolt. So it's obviously enticing to make oh. the game look as appealing as possible in your Leo, this is all you, trailer. man. It's Avengers. Okay use a few scenes not actually in the game. Maybe put some CGI there for the sake of cinema. Uh, maybe put that in. It's not in the game, but we can make it happen in the game, right? This is how legends are born. That island is one of my go-to picks for deceiving trailers, and it's one of the best ones of all time. This incredible, emotional, three-minute-long cinematic masterpiece showing a family being attacked and losing their lives to a zombie outbreak, all played in reverse there's so much you can analyze with this trailer it put dead island on the map for so many players this trailer was the first time i had even heard of the game it really set the title up to be a gripping emotional story of a zombie apocalypse and the emotional turmoil that ensues because of it here's the first thing you see putting the disc in shrunken head broken legs body parts on the concrete i'm saying dead island is a bad <laughs> game at all but the trailer and the game are two completely different beasts the tone of the game is still fairly serious but not as serious or emotionally gripping as the trailer would lead you to believe these characters have nothing to do with the game other than showing remnants of the outbreak as it first occurred on the island The developer Techland even went into the game after the trailer came out to try to adjust the tone as much as possible to be more in line with it But these still feel like two different things it Just shows how powerful marketing can be making what something you had no prior interest in But this was a case of false advertising just because we let somebody talented make our trailer Oops. Sometimes false advertising is very much deliberate as it sets you up for a massive shock while playing the game. Metal Gear Solid 2 is a prime example as you think you'll just play a snake the whole game. Nah, you're playing the rest of the game as this new character, Raiden. Final Fantasy oh, 7 Remake. Oh shit, totally forgot about that. Uh, literally involving the word remake, it sets you up to expect the story to basically follow the same steps as the original. Also the entirety of the original. On reality, this was a fucking lie. The Last of Us Part 2, on top of pulling the same Metal Gear Solid joke of, you thought you were playing as this character? Laugh. They also altered certain cutscenes for its trailers to make the character Joel look older in them, so that way, with viewers knowing he's aged, they were led to believe he was in more of the game than he really was, when in reality, they altered flashback scenes, made him look older, and put them in the trailer. See, I don't really consider that to be false advertising, at least in the more negative sense. Rather, it's leading players in another direction, or just not showing things to avoid spoilers. So it's just being an ass. But then we have <laughs> just the flat out lies. Some of the most despicable, loathsome moments in the video game industry. 
The Simpsons game. This game had the audacity mm. to say in its E3 2007 trailer it was releasing on every platform ever made. God. Coming what? No way. To every platform ever made. Wow, oh, even the PSP? See, most people would assume that's a joke, but you forget to take into consideration most people. Some people genuinely thought this game was coming to all these platforms, so we had to re-release the trailer. The voiceover was the same, but the platforms showcased were... Ah, true. Well, I said it was ridiculous That's for wild. anybody to assume the original trailer wasn't a joke. I think some of the platform choices were incredibly misleading. The Game Boy Advance and GameCube were still being supported at this time, so out of all platforms to put there as a joke, those are really odd choices considering I don't think it was too far-fetched to expect a Game Boy Advance or GameCube version in 2007. Or the Vic-20. The box itself can be pretty deceitful sometimes. The Legend of Zelda Breath, Breath of the, of the Wild, Wild on Wii U says it supports the Wii Remote and Nunchuck and Classic Controller and Lying. This was just a misprint, but there was speculation in the early days of Breath of the Wild's development that it would allow players to use motion controls like with Skyward Sword on the Wii. Now, supporting one Wii Remote by itself, I think only the bravest speculated that. Doom on Sega Saturn says on the box that it's the original Doom in all of its glory when it's missing content. But then we have the flat-out disappointment. Oh, well, Battlefront 2. Gushers commercial as a kid, and in those, whenever somebody ate one, their entire head would turn into a giant fruit, so you never ate one for years out of fear, and one day you decided life is hell anyways. Son of a bitch. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, this collector's edition comes with stones. I swear to God if they're just eggs. Not again. These have all been somewhat <laughs> tolerable lies, though. I mean, if she's cheating on you, at least she's only doing it a little. Aliens Colonial Marines was such a massive cluster of oh, garbage. This cluster what fun. the hell happened here? Game Dude, I remember that one. Really different from oh, the they can talk about, uh, um, so much what's his face? With good lighting, uh, AI, animations, a severe attention to detail. What's that motherfucking game release, from, uh, PS3? Few options here. See, this was Killzone. A massive Killzone 2 of the game more so than others but in the end, one. this was pure deceptive marketing at e3 2012 the game was running on very specific work machines this wasn't going to work on the consoles at the time but they made it still not work while it's not unplayable colonial marines was a huge disappointment and showcases how companies will pretty up a game for major gameplay demos to end up releasing something not nearly as groundbreaking. It's crazy how far these studios will go to mask a title's true identity, which, to be fair, I'm sure they wanted Aliens to end up looking like this. The intention definitely wasn't to win everybody over at E3 and then release shit. These gameplay demos are supposed to represent what they want the game to be, and if it actually turns out that way, well, let's pray God's a fan. I mean, this demo looks like a fine-tuned PS4 or Xbox One game, That's not a, a 360 fact. title. But even then, the graphical downgrade isn't merely due to the consoles. It affected the PC version as well, and overall, everything was just of lower quality. It tricked millions into buying the game, thinking it would be this, when in reality, it was nothing but a shell of that. Watch Dogs suffered a similar, though not a severe fate, where it too looked light years better via the gameplay demo than in its final state this was definitely because it was revealed quite early in the project's life they didn't have to take hardware limitations into account nearly as much at this time compared to when you're finalizing everything about the game and when it got to that point i mean the game still looks fine but that e3 gameplay demo was beyond impressive watchdogs at release was a somewhat buggy generic modern ubisoft game and not much more than that. No Man's Sky was a huge letdown <laughs> for many, with the promise of basically having an infinite amount of worlds to travel to in space. Of course, the ones they decided to showcase at E3 were the only ones of note. The game was supposed to feature procedurally generated worlds, and when you would land on one, it was truly you discovering it. But in reality, the game launched as a boring experience where there was nothing to Which do. Which got the better. The worlds weren't impressive. They didn't look as graphically decent as they did during the marketing push, and they all just felt like variations of each other. Nothing of note. Now, Watch Dogs wasn't the biggest downgrade it was still a decent game and no man's sky got a ton of updates and at this point it's pretty okay and does a better job living up to what was initially promised aliens was one of the worst cases of this deliberately making a better looking gameplay demo before releasing gameplay demos are supposed to be more trustworthy than trailers that's, that's the true. point of them the trailers use cg cutscenes and cuts between them and gameplay all the time the gameplay demo is supposed to show you oh, what infinite. you're gonna get because trailers can be incredibly misleading. <laughs> the Killzone 2 trailer infamously was all CGI, even though it was animated in a way to make the viewers think it was all gameplay. See, this was right before the PlayStation 3 was coming out, and that was a time when we thought anything was possible on these consoles. That is if also true. If anybody could resurrect Christ, it would be the PS3. So many assume <laughs> they weren't lying. This was gameplay. Now, Killzone 2 still looked quite good when it released, it was but the people who made this trailer, they're still going to hell. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2009 on Wii. The commercial used Xbox 360 
360 footage of the game with a Wii Remote pointer. How did they think that would fly? EA explained the Wii footage wouldn't look good on a TV, so they used the HD footage from the 360 version and put the Wii Remote pointer in there and BAM! Oh, that's that's garbage. Same, one game decided to do something innovative. Be the 76. Example of false advertising of all time. Fallout. Yeah, I'm not oh. really saying anything that hasn't already been said here. Smallpox. They fucking stink. But when talking about false advertising in gaming, we can't avoid the piss stain on my Xbox collection. Cyberpunk 2077 was developed by CD Projekt Red, a developer highly regarded Witcher for 3. work on the Witcher series and their commitment to consumer-friendly practices. I mean, The Witcher 3 was a huge hit, but even before that release, they announced they'd be working on a game based on the Cyberpunk series of tabletop RPGs. This was in 1964. Announced in 2012, then getting its first trailer in 2013, and then its next trailer five years later. In reality, the game was nowhere near starting full on development and it took until The Witcher 3's final expansion released in 2016 for the team to actually start work and when this gameplay demo was fully revealed in 2018, jaws were dropped. This was such a detailed world with people walking around who have legitimate lives to live. If you would follow just one around, you would see them go about their day, go to their job, go home, and every single decision of yours would come back to bite you in the ass. And this is all without saying, the game looked stunning. Just absolutely beautiful models and settings. The animations were amazing. It looked like the most advanced video game I... of all time. And... I need to go to the restroom real quick. Give me a second.
We are back, bro. We are back. Uh, hopefully, I enjoyed that little sad ass music, but I guess we gotta roll with that, you know. Uh, let's see. Where we at? Cyberpunk. Let's see. Let's press exit screen. To watch. Oh, you know what? Let's see what my boy Jake Baldino said. I take his pretty his criticism pretty well. All right, that was that was good. That, a lot to react to, I, more than I expected. So the Xbox uh, Bethesda E3 2021 press conference just wrapped up, and they gave us a lot of meat, a lot to look forward to, uh, especially considering I've been kind of putting it out there. I've been predicting kind of like a slow e3 news season just because of the pandemic and how everything has been going on but it does look like there is no slouch of information and games coming out i thought this was a pretty good presentation there's a lot of stuff that's still a ways out like fable which we didn't see uh I perfect would... dark which we didn't see i am totally comfortable and totally accepting and willing to wait for stuff like that but the stuff that we got to see i am Pretty pumped about. I don't think there was like a ball drop, like mic drop show stopping moment, but I thought it was consistent and informative. And again, just giving me things to look forward to. I don't ask for a lot other than that. So uh, yeah, I think pretty good. Uh, it was really fun to watch this at home. I gathered my, I got my, I got my chicken tendies ready. Like a, I'm like a gross dude. So I kick back and watch it here alone and uh, I have a lot that I want to react to. I, I wanna just point out some of my favorite stuff. Uh, so first of all, uh, Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl is Looked what it's great. going to be called. We know it's coming April 28th, 2022. I had to look at my notes here. Um, and it looked incredible. Uh, visually, the uh, Stalker vibe wise, there's still that sense of like, weird misery i was hoping for i think people who aren't into stalker might compare this to something like the most recent metro but it should be pretty it looks pretty damn different uh we got to see some combat that looked pretty good uh we also got to see doing some science uh, we got to see large open environments a lot of dialogue i'm just kind of all about this uh i'm very excited this one i'm still gonna probably play on pc i feel like these are pc games but I'm really excited just because it's been so long since a Stalker game and they were groundbreaking at the time. So how can it be groundbreaking this time other than some insane, crazy graphics and just art design? We shall see. Also, just want to point out too, uh, I'm not going totally in order, but uh, Back for Blood Game Pass Day 1, that's pretty huge. That's a, that's a good value. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy I have that subscription. Oh, wow. Wasn't it crazy? I didn't, I didn't see this coming. Outer Worlds 2. That's great. I uh. actually thought that the Outer Worlds was going to be like a property that kind of, once the dust settled between the Xbox, uh, Bethesda acquisition, and, and also the Xbox buying Obsidian and everything, I thought that once all that dust settled, the Outer Worlds as a brand was going to be left to the wayside. And thankfully, that's not the case. I'm very much happy to see Xbox specifically, even though they supported the game already, but I'm, I'm happy that moving forward, they're still very much down with letting obsidian make some obsidian ass rpgs i love think that's it. good love uh, granted it. i still want to see what else obsidian is working on i, I want to see avowed that's still very much probably a ways off but still also i thought it was a really good trailer i thought it like i like when if we have to get cinematic trailers i like when they're a little tongue-in-cheek i thought that was entertaining that's just uh, that's just me also new uh, avalanche studios game contraband it's going to be co-op open world that's really all they said but the vibe was cool Again, that's something that's probably a ways off, but I was like, all right, cool. That should be interesting. I guess while we're on the co-op open world thing, let's talk Redfall. This was the last thing. This was the big, like, one more thing. Um, oh, which, uh, the whole time I'm sitting there, great. I'm like, they're saving Big Phil for something crazy. He's going to come out and he's